Velociraptors belong to a family of dinosaurs called the Dromaeosaurids. Their name means speedy thief. They were feathered and relatively small dinosaurs that walked on two legs. They lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous period around 70 million years ago. But like all the non-avian dinosaurs, they became extinct at the Cretaceous-Paleogene boundary 66 million years ago. Here, we ask the question, could Velociraptors survive nowadays? They weighed between 15 and 20 kilograms, or 33 to 44 pounds, and grew up to 2 meters, or 6.5 feet long. It was considerably smaller than those portrayed in the film Jurassic Park. But this by no means indicates that it was any less fierce. Velociraptor had many advantages that made it an iconic predator of the late Cretaceous. But could it survive today? Velociraptors were carnivores. They were considered adept hunters. They were thought to be at least moderately warm-blooded, owing largely to the feathers that covered their bodies. This meant that they required a significant amount of energy to hunt. Their sense of hearing was exceptional, which they used to detect their prey. Their body shape and size suggest that Velociraptors were fast and agile. Once they had located their prey, they would run after it. They could change direction swiftly, and their covering of feathers is thought to have increased thrust. They had very muscular back legs and long shin bones, which increased their stride length. Their long, elongated tail helped them to steer at speeds. They regularly ran at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour, sometimes hitting 40 miles per hour in a flat-out sprint. Although this may not sound fast when compared to modern-day sprinters like cheetahs, who reach top speeds of 75 miles per hour, it was fast by dinosaur standards. Whilst it certainly wasn't the fastest dinosaur, it would have been much faster than its common prey. The narrow jaws of the Velociraptor and its relatively light build suggest that it fed on small prey. Although this would most commonly have been small reptiles, mammals, and insects, it could have also hunted young Protoceratops, as well as baby Oviraptor and the Pachycephalosaurs. The smaller species of prey that was considered most common for Velociraptors would still be available to them today in the form of lizards and the likes of rabbits and rodents. They would be able to outrun these animals, but larger prey like small deer may be more of a challenge. There is a famous fossil that was found in Mongolia that depicts a velociraptor intertwined with a protoceratops. It is called the fighting dinosaurs. It appears that the protoceratops had managed to break the predator's leg during the fight for survival, whilst the velociraptor pierced the protoceratops' throat with its sickle-shaped claw. The reason for the fighting dinosaur is debated. Some believe that the Velociraptor was inexperienced or maybe desperate to take on the much bulkier dinosaur. Others think that it may have been the Protoceratops that instigated the fight, perhaps seeing the nearby Velociraptor as a threat to it or its young. Although it was originally thought and then suggested in Jurassic Park that the Velociraptor's sickle-shaped claw on its hind leg was used to disembowel prey, this is now believed to be wrong. Scientists have reconstructed a mechanical model of the Velociraptor and couldn't get the large claw to disembowel. Instead, it is believed that it was used to stab its victims and then to grasp them and pin them down much like a bird of prey uses its talons to do the same. The Velociraptor would have been able to dispatch its prey through biting it with its jaws. Instead of possessing a beak, they had teeth and a reptilian mouth. Another memorable moment in Jurassic Park was when the Velociraptor tapped its sickle claw on the ground whilst it was hunting the children. There is no evidence that these dinosaurs had the ability to tap their claw like that, but fossilized footprints from Velociraptors show that they walked on only two of their three toes and therefore kept their sickle claw off the ground, most likely to keep it sharp. Although the famous fossil of the fighting dinosaur shows the Velociraptor seemingly taking down larger prey, in this case, a sheep-sized herbivore, it was thought that Velociraptors preyed on much smaller species. In fact, most Velociraptors don't take down prey more than 50% of their own body size. 
Of course, if species are considered pack animals, then that enables them to hunt larger animals. There is debate about whether velociraptors were pack hunters or not. A set of footprints preserved in the mud in China suggests several dromaeosaurids walking together, perhaps in the pursuit of prey. If they could coordinate attacks, then they could target larger animals. Today, those larger animals would mostly be medium-sized mammals like deer or wild boar. Many scientists believe that there is another explanation for the set of footprints. They could merely have been multiple velociraptors following each other or flocking. Some hawks hunt cooperatively, and some reptiles like Komodo dragons use a method called mobbing, whereby one will be attacking prey and others will join in. This isn't regarded as pack hunting, and it is largely believed that velociraptors were solitary hunters. Multiple footprints around prey kills could be scavenging a carcass together, rather than evidence of pack hunting. Although most predators scavenge at least some of the time, Velociraptor wasn't built for that purpose. It was nearly large enough to scare off other dinosaurs at a carcass, and its jaws would have been powerful enough to bite through bone. But there was some evidence that it scavenged, taking advantage of any meat available to them. Fossil evidence has found a pterosaur bone inside the gut of one Velociraptor. This suggests that the Velociraptor scavenged a dead flying reptile rather than plucking one out of the sky. It would have been dangerous for the turkey-sized ground-dwelling dinosaur to take on a flying reptile with an enormous beak and a wingspan of up to 3 meters. The fact that it swallowed the bone suggests that there wasn't much meat left on the carcass. If velociraptors lived in Asia today, as they did 70 million years ago, they may compete with other scavengers such as vultures, jackals, striped hyenas, leopards, and wolves. If they were solitary animals, then they may be outcompeted at carcass sites by the more established scavengers. A pack of wolves or a clan of hyenas could easily chase away a lone velociraptor. As we know that velociraptors weren't as large as depicted in films, they may not be as dominant as some of today's predators and scavengers. But that's not to say that they couldn't survive. Predators come in all shapes and sizes. The biggest change that had occurred in the animal kingdom since the demise of the dinosaurs was the evolution of mammals. Whilst dinosaurs dominated during the Mesozoic era, which included the Cretaceous period, mammals couldn't thrive. They emerged during the late Triassic, but most were the size of shrews. Only when the age of dinosaurs came to an end could they branch out and thrive into the vast array of different species we have on Earth today. Velociraptors were well adapted to the geography and climate of the Mesozoic, but that is very different from today, as are the other animals within their ecosystem. Whilst Velociraptors were apex predators, they also fell prey to larger carnivorous dinosaurs. Fossil evidence shows injuries consistent with attacks from larger theropods, like Tarbosaurus. Today, they would be in a world where mammalian predators dominate. The big cats such as tigers and Asiatic lions are capable of taking down far larger prey than the 20-kilogram velociraptor. If velociraptors ventured out of modern-day Asia, then they would have to avoid the other big cats, such as African lions, leopards, and jaguars. Whilst some aquatic predators may be familiar to them like crocodiles and sharks, and they likely had an instinct to be wary around water, many land-dwelling predators would be new. However, because velociraptors were not at the top of the food chain, they would have had instincts to evade predators, instincts that they could use against today's predators. Velociraptor has been depicted as a highly intelligent animal. Whilst its brain was relatively large in relation to its body size compared to most dinosaurs, it certainly wasn't as intelligent as a human, chimp, or crow. In the modern world, would being less intelligent than the mammalian predators they'd be competing against matter? Probably not. Raw instinct and physical ability to hunt and evade predation themselves would be more important in the fight for survival. Velociraptors may have to adapt to this new, modern world. There would certainly be enough prey to eat, but they may need to develop their social skills and begin hunting as a pack, if that is something that they didn't already do. Their safety in numbers would allow them to fend off other scavengers around a carcass and secure larger prey. But what do you think? 
Do you think velociraptors could survive nowadays? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.